Thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe for more amazing, entertaining, delightful, great disciple content. Hold up. Paul Precopia is a 40-year-old business owner from Beloit, Wisconsin. He is suing his ex-girlfriend, 29-year-old sales representative Melissa Paul, for loans and pain and suffering. Melissa is countersuing for emotional distress and the return of her property. Now, here's Judge Joe Brown. You want to sue the defendant, who is apparently your former girlfriend or lover, for past due rent, a tire loan, a Valentine's Day loan, and for pain and suffering due to an abortion. And you, ma'am, are counterclaiming, asserting that the plaintiff harassed you, that the items that he's talking about actually were gifts. You wish the return of your books. You want to get compensated for the emotional distress he has caused you as a result of the harassment and for one half the cost of the abortion. Is that correct? What kind of relationship did you two have and for how long? Okay. Um, most important thing here is, um, is I care about the, her. I've always loved her and I always will love her. All right, but and, how long okay, were you We were uh, six months. Now, how did your claim arise? Essentially, uh, one of the most important things are dealing with the emotional aspects, and I'm mainly concerned with getting the, uh, the, the Well, let's, the let's put some logical order to okay. it. Okay, before during you two break up, you apparently August. say there were some loans given to her. What right. are these about? First off, I was on disability, but I'd loved her so much. We were, we were dating, and I had been real concerned. Just, I'm the kind of person I really want to be deeply involved with someone. I'd waited five years to get involved with someone, and had basically used the first five years since my last divorce just to be with my son and then I decided to get involved in a relationship. I really put a lot of effort into it and I, it was real important to me and I explained several, several times how much I loved and cared her and made sure that she felt the same way. May I ask you a question? Yes, how sir. is it that you say, I'm going to wait five years before I get emotionally involved and then you say, okay, now I'm ready to get involved and then I get involved? Well, what happened was, it's just, it's like love at first sight kind of thing. I had no intentions of getting that heavily involved, uh, believe me. And then I met her, saw her in the park, and I just thought she was so special and so beautiful. And as I talked with her, one of the things we talked about was that she had recently gotten off a divorce and that she wanted someone who was really sensitive and caring. And I, within a short time, I said, I have really strong feelings for you. I said, am I crazy? Please tell me if, you know, moving too fast. Just let me know that. Because I said, I don't want to go through the pain of hurt, of, you know, of, of being involved with someone, have them say, get lost. I said, well, uh, the feelings I have for you, I could never tell you to get lost under any circumstances. And she said she felt the same way. She clearly said, and I'm very communicative, I demand to know the answers to these things. And I said, look, I said, if... Demand? Yeah, I demand. I want to know that, that if I'm caring this much for someone, that, you know, I want, am I out of place or not? Am I asking too much? Do you love well, me this that's much? that's a little unusual I know. in terms of the way you put it. You demand of them that they give you a response to this. It's kind of natural. You're looking at someone saying, look, I'm really feeling strongly for you. Do you really feel this way toward me? I'm just using the example that I was firm, that I, I didn't want to just hear, well, no, I like you, too. Okay, you were firm in demanding an answer to that question. That I wanted question. to the truth, okay. was, if there was the well, same what, depth. What answer did you give him, if any? I don't really, honestly, I don't remember. Um, did you like him? Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of, I'm the person where if I go out with somebody or somebody approaches me, I go with the flow, you know. I just take it at each day, see how it goes, and... Um, because you can never predict, yeah, this is going to work out. Okay, now, what is the first loan you say you make to her? I just, you know, been caring about her. I noticed her car, just like you notice someone's car. And I, I looked at it, and I saw that her tires in the rear, I believe they were, were practically balding. And I was real concerned about that. And I said, we got to do something about that. you got to get some tires. And she, at the time, was barely making it financially. And she said, there's no way I can get tires right now. There's just no way. And I said, winter's coming. You've got to get new tires. I can't have you, you know, it's not okay. You demanded. And, it, well, not like, you get them or I don't love you. I mean, first of all, I wouldn't still have been seeing her if she didn't answer back and look me in the eyes and say, Paul, I've never felt this way about a man either. I really think I want okay. a long-term relationship with you. So what ultimately comes so out So ultimately, I, I called all around trying to find her a good buy. You know, I'll help you. I'll give you the money. And we'll lend you the money. I did not say give. I don't have that money. I have that kind of money. But I was worried about her. She said she couldn't get them. Now, do you take that as a loan, or um, is that a gift? At the time, I did tell him I would pay him back when I could, but I didn't know how long it would be. So how much did that come to? $134, sir. $134. Well, 
What's the next loan you say? And then you make? she said her rent was coming up, and she did not have enough money. And her procedure normally was to go down to one of those cat they're called cash stores. You borrow money against your future paycheck, and then he charged like 20% interest on that. I didn't want her doing that. You became concerned about that. So what did you do? So I at first had lent her at least $100 cash for rent to help her pay the rent. You're claiming 200. So I, I actually total. Of, I went through the figures. It was $100, and then another time. A total she needed this one other time was $165, specifically so she wouldn't get a, any um, return checks. So I gave her 165 cash. We drove to her bank where she deposited it. Now, what about this Valentine's Day loan? How well, do you... uh, one of the things I talked about up front several times with her, because I'm kind of ashamed of this, but I had no choice because I've been on disability and I'm paying child support, okay. was I talked to her that I said, you know, one of the things I like to do is that we would take turns. I said, I don't have a lot of money. You don't have a lot of money. I just can't pay for dates. Can we, would you, what, we, what I think is a neat thing to do is that I'd take you out and then, you know, we'll go and I'll pay for the theater, you pay for dinner. Or the next date you pay for it and I'll get this one. You know, we help people work together as a team. Okay, just tell me what we have here. But what happens Valentine's Day is that I said that was our special time. She said it was real important to her. We had talked about she, she didn't have a lot of money. I, you know, I said, I want to really do something special. Let me hazard a guess. You loaned her the money no, 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 to no. take you out for Valentine's no. Day? No, I planned the whole trip. I planned the whole trip. Okay. It was a trip. To, for Valentine's Day, right. Okay, now what was the loan for? It wasn't a loan, sir. What had happened was part of the because we're going to have Valentine's Day together. It was our day, right? Okay, our day. I, I And then I she got said, she goes, I, can put in, I said, can you put in 30 or 40? And she said, yes. She goes, that's all I can do. You have to take care of the rest. I said, if you can put in 30 or 40, I can give us a great day. I can pay for the so rest. So she's supposed to put up $40. Right. Well, does she? Well, the, she did not, no. So you're saying she owes you $40 because she said she'd cover that much of the day. Right. On Valentine's Day. Now, let me hear from you, ma'am. So far, $134 on the tires. You said you'd pay him back on that. $100 cash for rent, so you wouldn't have to go to the cash advance place. Do you acknowledge that? Mm hmm Okay. $165 to cover some checks that you wrote. Is that right? I don't remember the exact amount. It was a while back. It's hard to remember. Now, what about this $40 share of the Valentine's Day date? Okay. <laughs> you have to understand, it looks, it sounds funny, Arna, but we were together, and neither of us had a lot of money, and I wanted to make it a big date. I mean, as you said, you, heard, you get gifts for each other. She you. couldn't I, give me a gift. I heard you. I heard you. I don't want your every thought I, on the thing. We'll be back with more of Judge Joe Brown. We're back with Judge Joe Brown. The plaintiff in this case says he is still madly in love with the defendant. Nonetheless, he is suing for a series of loans and pain and suffering due to an abortion. The defendant is countersuing for harassment. Let's listen in. Now, you want her to pay you because she had an abortion and you were caused pain and suffering. Well, sir, my major concern... And mental anguish and all of that. Now, what is this about? Why do you think she should pay you for doing that? My main concern here is first to set something straight and right. And mainly the money that I had lent her is I want back. Okay? The, the pain and suffering, my concern is that was just to make the note of having this and bring this to a, more of a, a righteous conclusion by, by having... What do you mean by righteous conclusion? Well, she was extremely cruel and mean. When she was having the abortion, when, when she went from loving me and telling me she wanted to be with me forever and that she was sorry for the way she treated me all the time and her moodiness and that she became so cold and, and, and well, became How did mean. she become cold? She was, we were going to have our baby. The only time day she said, she told me she was having our baby. And she said, and I, she said, what do you want to do? And I said, honey, I want us to be together and have a future together. And she said, that's great. She cried and said this was so important to her that I wanted this and that, yes, she wants Somewhere our future. Somewhere along the line, and then she two decided weeks later, to change her mind Right, two weeks abortion. later, sir. Two weeks later. She said, I don't care about you anymore. Get away. She went to a counselor who she sees. She wrote me a letter. She says, I know, because we had talked about, we have just a, a preference a little bit. Ever since we were dating, we had talked about, because she had some abortions previous to me dating, while she was still with her other husband. And I said to her, strongly and specifically, I said, I had a hard time even forgiving that. I didn't want to go on dating, even though I loved her. So you made demands on her again? Well, I didn't make demands, so I told her, just, you know, and this is a relationship, and I said, look, I need this to know. This is what's going to be. This is what's important to me. No, not what's going to be. No. But I said, this is what's important to me. So how and, does well, that... Well, she knew that when being with me meant that I, I couldn't stand for an abortion, and she had promised me she'd never do something like that in our relationship. Well, she changed her mind, and she decided she did not want another child. Right. And particularly not out of wedlock, and maybe not with you for right. a number of reasons. But <laughs> now, why don't you tell me... Except that she promised me? to do that. Well, she broke her promise. Now, let me hear your version of facts. The thing about the abortion 
and that I promised him I wouldn't have one while I was dating him. It was after we broke up anyway, so I did keep my promise. It's just kind of strange, these things about it. He's always demanding, setting certain principles down. Tell me about that. Um, did you like that? No, no. Uh, I felt like he wanted to change me into something he wanted me to be, not what I am. A lot of times he would want me to wear certain types of clothes and, and he'd get mad if I wore my bike jacket. It's a black leather bike jacket. He'd get all jealous when I'd go out the door with that, thinking I was going out to see somebody or something. He wanted me to listen to certain kinds of music, didn't approve of mine. Um, it's kind of controlling, isn't it? Yeah, and he said I had to read the paper every day, too. He said I should read the paper every day. Okay, let's get to your harassment flame here. I was at my sister's house in Madison when I told him that I didn't want to see him anymore. What did uh, he do? Oh, we would gotten a big argument on the phone. And then, of course, the stuff about the money came up. Did he I just come up one time, or would he let it go, or what? No, no, definitely no. What did he do? He called back that same night, 2 o'clock in the morning, woke everybody up. Then what did he do when you answered the phone, or you got he on the line? He wanted to try and talk to me and, you know, have me rethink all this and didn't want me to have the abortion. Did he call again? Numerous times. What do you mean by numerous? I can't count. He Give called, me an estimate. I guess I'd have to say maybe four times because you can only talk so long before the tape is used up. Okay, you're saying he left messages? Yeah. I told him not to call me. He called my relatives and tried to talk to them. And How long did this go on? About a month and a half, two months. You advised him not to call, is that right? I went to the police. I've got the report right here. Well, how long had this gone on before you went to the police? I think two weeks, maybe a little longer. I, I was going to kind of wait it out. Then he was still calling one of my co-workers. He stopped in at work and demanded to see Rhonda so he could give her this letter. Would not leave until she came out. And the letter you have? I don't. I gave everything back to him. Well, the real important thing here, sir, is, and I know it's, you're saying, well, this is harassment or I'm controlling. It wasn't that way at all, sir. One of the most poignant times was an example. We were laying in bed together, and I said, you know, this is really hard. I didn't trust anyone for a long time. And I said, tell me, you know, do you want a long-term relationship with me or not? If you want me to leave now, that's fine. I said, please tell me now. If you're uncomfortable, if you don't want to be with me forever, just tell me. She was more than willing to express deep love and desire to be with me but forever. But have you ever considered that maybe if you go overboard, you may not only defeat your purposes, you may actually turn someone against you? Well, that's possible, sir, except that she would go from, what she admitted in letters, she would go from, she even wrote me, from my Valentine's card, for example, she wrote, I'm sorry for the way I treat you. She goes, like, she's suffering well, from severe depression. Well, did you get the idea that maybe she was getting fed up with what you were no. doing to her, continuously demanding I wasn't this, demanding, demanding sir. that, stating this, sir? requiring this? It wasn't demanding, it wasn't, I didn't go and say, you better be here, or you better get <laughs> tires, or you better love me, because if, if, if this You is, better love me. I did me. not say that, that's the point. Keep going. If I'm saying to her, I love you deeply, you're cold and mean, and sometimes you're loving, what, what is it with you? And she says, you know what, it's me, it's my, I'm sorry. She goes, I really do want you, please don't leave me, please don't, oh, well, please understand. Maybe That's her she's words. being nice, maybe well, she's Well, sir, weakened. you tell someone maybe the truth, don't you? Don't you tell someone the truth? You have exhausted the court to a great extent by <laughs> filling in all of the nooks and crannies and all of the details. Well, sir, not your painting that I demanded and was hard Getting to where you are. I need to make sure that's not clear. Did you do this that. kind of thing to her on a regular basis and belabor points like this? Did he do that? Endlessly talk on and on. Endlessly, and on. Okay. Because I'm communicating, sir. She reported over and over again that she loved the way I was communicating. Well, she, maybe she was trying to humor you, but she went to no, the police uh, because you kept telling her that. I've talked with 30 different women trying to get a handle this and several counselors because I went through a year of depression, and several of them You've said... You've received counseling before. Yes, sir. I suggest uh, you go seek it again. And, sir, you know what they said, sir? They said she was extremely cold, she was very selfish, and for the, and they were the, making you feel better. No, Actually, she was very tolerant. Some people I know would have left that very, would be fine. very long ago. Now, what about your books? He has Rubbermaid tubs, you know, the big tubs. He's got, I believe, a printer on one and his computer on How many books are we talking about? 35 or 40 books. 
He won't give them back? No. Why won't you give her books back? She gave me those books. She said, I haven't looked at these in a year or two. You can use these for your thing. I don't care if you just keep them. She goes, we're going to live together anyway. Why don't you give them back That's to her? fine. She had, I didn't like, her, her rules were at the time, drop them off someplace. I don't want to talk to you. So if you can lay down rules, why I didn't lay down she, rules, That sir. wasn't a rule. All she's doing is making a request. She's asking you to drop them off someplace. Right, sir. Don't you get some thought here that she was just tired of what you were doing? It That's was tedious. Have no, you ever sir. heard the words ainly retentive? Yes, sir. Okay, first off, would you agree to return her books yes. to her? All right. On your side of things, $40 for her share of the Valentine's Day. I'm going to give you a little dignity even if you don't want it yourself. The court is not going to award you $40 for that. Have a little bit of pride in yourself. Sir, so you question? want no? I'm sorry. Where's the court is going to require that right. you act with dignity. Therefore, that's out. One hundred dollars for the rent. She acknowledges that. Okay, I'll give you that. One hundred dollars. Okay, you feel satisfied. You feel technically correct. You feel vindicated. Okay. Just as she does with her books, the same thing, okay, sir. Okay, one hundred and sixty-five dollars. She acknowledges for the cash to cover the checks. That's two hundred and sixty-five dollars, and one hundred and thirty-four dollars for the tires, where you insisted and demanded that she replace the tires. I see why you were out of the loop for five years. She promised okay. me. To, she wanted to pay me back, sir. Three hundred ninety-nine dollars. You have shown that you are entitled sir. to. Now let's get back to the harassment. He was self-righteously trying to show you his wisdom and point out to you the logical errors in your position by one time telling him how good he was for you, how much you loved him, Try and then times, being sir. ill 20 times. Oh, yes, sir. God. There he goes right now. Well, I'll tell you what. He doesn't understand how wrong that is, so the court will enlighten him in a logical fashion. I will give you $1 actual damages on that, $2,499 punitive. So that's going to be $2,500 that is the judgment to you for his harassment. So we will subtract from that the set off of $399. So you get $2,101 as judgment on the cross complaint. Very good. Court is in recess. Sir, I'm going to ask you to step out the door and to your right. Now, the plaintiff in this case was pretty demanding that the defendant make the exact same emotional investment that he was making in their relationship. And when she didn't, he was more than disappointed. A promise broken was just unacceptable. But the judge says not actionable. His behavior actually ends up costing him. We'll find out what the litigants have to say in a moment.